Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am Amira Smith, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, Joshua Meekins. What's up? What's up? What up? Today, we are graced to have the amazing presence of a, a former, you know, Wildcat, Villanova alum, and a filmmaker within his own right. Oh, man. I introduce y'all to a, a good friend of mine, Mr. Daryl Reynolds. Thank How you, you doing, man. sir? Doing good, man. Thank you for having me on. Love it, man. We, uh, we, definitely, you were a thought to have on here, just as, like, as we've kind of gone throughout our film journey and seen you kind of sprout yours. Um, it's just been amazing to see the things you come up with. I mean, you had your Stay Tuned with D-Ray. Thank which you. did really well. Thank you. And then uh, you just did your, uh, I'll let you talk about it a little bit more when we get there, but your, your letter to Kobe, which was amazing. Thank you. Uh, by the way. But um, why don't you tell the people, you know, what you do, how you kind of came about what you're doing and how you define what you do. I got to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm at a point where I don't really know. It's a, <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. I'll okay. explain why. I played, you know, graduated in 17, got hurt uh, a year after that, mm -hmm. and, you know, just jumped right into the media. And I've been doing a little bit of everything. I do public speaking. Um, like you said, I, I had the show Stay Tuned with D-Ray, which was, it kind of mocked the, the Johnny Carson slash Arsenio style late night talk shows. And mm -hmm. I've always admired the conversations that came out of that. So I did that with my teammates and that turned into something. Um, I gave a, a guide, a tour at the Dava Day at Nova. Mm -hmm. uh, I work freelance for the Big East. So it's yeah, wow. really, it really is like one of those things where whatever I can get my hands on, I yeah. will. You know what I mean? It, but it's not so much of... I, just, I don't know exactly what I want to do in this media thing. I, I thought it was only movies and screenwriting. I thought I would never, ever want to be in front of a camera. And I did that, and I was like, oh, I like this. Okay. You know what I mean? So I'm really just trying to figure out where I fit in this, in this space. So you mix in your... um. So, okay, you said you graduated when? 17, 2017. Oh, at se oh, in 2017? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then yeah, yeah. you played overseas. Yeah, I played overseas in Poland for a year. I got okay. back... The um, in May 2018, May 1st, okay. May 30th, I was playing pickup at LaSalle with some other pro guys. I come down ACL, LCL, PCL, Jeez. hamstring, and I got nerve damage from my knee down. Oh, uh, so safe to say, it was like, all right, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> that was your sign. Exactly, exactly. That was like, what's next? But the beauty of it was I was as passionate about that, if not more, than basketball. Okay. And I, mean, I didn't start playing basketball until I was 15. So, oh, wow. like, I've always been into the arts and cinema way more than basketball. Wow, that's okay. what, that was going to be my next question. Like, yeah. how old were you? So, were you always a creative writer? And um, how old were you that, that when you think back to your childhood that you kind of figured you wanted to go on a creative path? I think it really started when I, I got to Lowell Mary because I took a photography class. Okay. Uh, I transferred into Lowell Mary my junior year of high school. Okay. So, I took a photography class, and, you know, like, it's coming from Martin Luther King, those those classes weren't there. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that yeah. wasn't there at Parkway Northwest. Those classes weren't there. They they helped me with other things, but not that. So when I got to Lil Mary and was really able to hone in on that and, and play with those type of skills, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. Um, and I, like I said, I didn't know. I thought it would only be from a writing and directing standpoint. Yeah. And once I got to college and we started doing things in front of the camera because you're – you're a brand at that point. You're a yeah. part of the brand of the college. Uh, I started to realize, like, in front of the camera stuff is fun. You know, I might, I might have something to... to and you got the personality for it. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Really You'd be surprised, like, how, like, like shy I really am. Like, I don't... Like, it's like, I know I, I have a personality. Yeah. I know I can be a bit animated, but, like, I'd much rather be like, ah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. I just put the art forward. Nah, I'm, I'm going to get out the way. Y'all exactly. yeah. appreciate yeah. that. So, I'm, I'm doing, like I said, just a little bit of everything. Just trying to figure it out. You know, that's... That's the fine print on being an athlete, a pro athlete. They don't tell you that when you're done, you got to figure out who the hell you are in this world, yeah. you know, outside of that sport. So you think that took some adjusting? Like, how would, like, would you think you were prepared for that jump? Or do you feel like you had to kind of, you know, ease into it? Because for some people, it's hard. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely difficult at first. Um, you know, I give myself, like, two days to, to really sulk about it and mm -hmm. be upset. But it was it's exciting. You know, I think a lot of stuff I'm doing now, it was at 35. Yeah. Um, I always plan for it to be at 35, not 25, but yeah. it's it's exciting, you know, and I, I kind of, it's, I like being a new kid. Yeah. I guess the best way to put it. I'm trying to, I was trying to phrase it the right way. I like being a new kid. I like the idea of, of being able to figure out, you know, where you're going to go and where you're going to fit in and not having an obligation to be in any, you know, one sitting. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I've always been a new kid at transform from school to school. You know, mm -hmm. you got to sit at different tables, figure out who you fit in with. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what I'm doing my career. Wow. It's funny because we've been having a lot of transition in schools. Like you said, it probably prepared you 
yeah. for changing careers and being yeah. in an entirely new surrounding, but it, it probably was the best thing that you hadn't played basketball your entire adolescence. Yeah. Mm. Because I noticed that with a lot of um, ex-athletes once who retire, yeah. where they literally were practicing to be in an NBA and since they were nine. Yeah. And then sometimes that happens, they go to pro, yeah. and then they're facing 40, and then they have no idea yeah. who they are outside of being an athlete. Exactly. If, if there is something else. Because sometimes then it's like, okay, I will transition, I'll teach or whatever. Yeah. But um, so with everything you have, how did you start in media? Because, you know, that's a lot of things that a lot of people will ask. I know probably ask you, mm-hmm. ask you. They're like, well, well, how did you get started? Mm-hmm. And you have to like really unpack it. You're like, well, whoa, wait, when did I get started? Yeah, how, yeah. What was your first thing you did that made you say, you know what, I'm a media maker or I'm a content creator? First that thing made you I consider did, it, yourself it, was, it was the show. It was Stay Tuned with D-Ray. I got back. I went on campus. I, I talked to Professor Hezekiah Lewis. Yep. And uh, I pitched him the idea. This was before I got hurt. So I pitched him the idea. Um, and obviously when I got hurt, it was like, all right, now we let's expedite this. Let's really yeah. get this moving. But from vision to execution, I was like, if, if we can do that over and over again, then we got something. Because it's only going to get bigger, resources only going to get better. And we did that with no money. Um, you know, my mom was out, like, cooking and getting the food together. Like, that's what we yeah. helped with the guests and things like that. We pulled the set together from uh, the desk that was in the teacher's office, a uh, couch that was in the student lounge, yeah. and a backdrop that was just sitting in the studio. Okay. Um, and we, we made this show that was picked up by NBC Sports and Fox Sports 1. I'm like, yo, if it looks that good for them to be willing to put on their stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. imagine what happens if we got some red behind us. Wow. Yeah. How yeah. many episodes you shoot the first one? That first one we shot, uh, and, and was like my a man season. behind the camera, Drew, could definitely attest to it. <laughs> <laughs> we, shot, we shot quite a few. It was not the most organized. We shot 21 interviews in three days. Dang. Jeez. So it was literally like, I want to say. It's funny because I know Hez, and that's his model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Turn him out, Exactly, boy. <laughs> exactly. Hez is a hustler. None of that could have happened without them. I'm, I'm sorry for not, you know, doubling down on that. It was it was definitely, it wasn't just me. It was, you know, that crew of students, exactly. Um, so excuse me for, for talking like that. But uh, but now, like I said, I saw that if we could do that from, from you know, a vision, us just wrapping it up about something to execution, I'm like, all right, bet that. But Hez... He's a hustler, you know. Yeah. When he saw it, it was I think it was five interviews the first day, seven the next, nine on that last one. Wow! And he was just going and going. Yeah, man. That's, that's Hez's mentality. Had it for Hez is like I think the reason for us like why we hustle in film. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like film by itself is like you work hard, you know, make this happen. But there's never a no. Like you have to go in, you have to make things work. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be in situations where yeah. you know things might not be ideal, but yeah. Hez is always the proponent of okay. Make it happen. Yeah. Like, what you want to do? Make it happen. I heard this quote once. It was like, um, like somebody was like, spell entrepreneur. And the kid goes, F-I-G-U-R-E-T-F-I-T-O-U-T. Uh, I'm like, figure it the fuck out. <laughs> you know I mean? It's like, it's like when you actually spell it out, and it's like that is a part of, of filmmaking, yeah. of, 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 of being any type of creative. Like when you're trying to bring these visions together, it really is just a matter of figure it the fuck out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what happened with that show. Like, that backdrop, that wasn't the backdrop I wanted to use. I had a, a much, much more extravagant and dramatic uh, scene for the background. It was like, this is all we got. Make yeah. it happen. You know what I mean? So and I, it's, it's fun in that. It's fun in that. It's like when you start cooking and you ain't got enough things, so you just pull something else. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you end up with something completely different from what you started with. Mm-hmm. Like, it's some fun to be had of just figuring it out. So I, I know when people see this episode, they're going to want to say, okay, like, if they were to watch one of your Stay Tuned with D-Ray episodes yeah. to get hooked... Which one would you tell them to watch? Uh, probably the one with Eric. Yeah. Probably the one with Eric. And that hurts to say because I can't fucking stand Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, but, who? Eric Pascal. Yeah. Um, so who were you, you? Who were you interviewing? Just all athletes? This so that first season was just um, it was just my Nova teammates. It was the to- it was my uh, teammates, managers, and coaches. Um, I I pulled in the, the managers and coaches because. The whole show started with an idea of wanting to get the full story. Yeah. So I was like, the managers have a different perspective on this. The coaches have a different perspective on this. The walk-ons have a different perspective on this. So you can ask the, the quote-unquote who's who as far as the big names go, but yeah. when you get everybody, that brings the story together. That was the first season. The second season, um, we had a little bit of everybody. I had Zach Ertz's mom, Lisa Ertz on, um, just talking about you know having a son in professional sports. Um, I had a guy named Riley Cote, he's played for the Flyers, he's getting involved with the CBD world and, and medical wow. cannabis. 
I obviously had some of my old teammates on and coaches. I had a young lady named Avery Mars from um, St. Joe's who survived the stroke at 17. And wow. She's actually on the network now, you know, creating some stuff with me. So it's like, it's the show. I want my show to be whatever. I want it to be like a late night talk show. You don't yeah. know who you're going to get when you get up there. You know you're going to get a good story and a couple of laughs if you like me, if you don't. Fuck <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, that was, that was generally what I want the show to, to be about. It's, it's no real one brand. It's just if you have a story to come up, yeah. you know? That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm saying, I, was like, I know I tuned into a couple episodes just checking it out. Thank, so thank you. Always trying to support. Where, where can they go? YouTube? Yeah, yeah. It's on YouTube. Uh, if you go on uh, staytunednetwork.com, not the, just staytunednetwork.com. All the stuff is up there um, from the podcast to the videos. But it is a YouTube channel, uh, the Stay Tune Network on YouTube. And it's all of it. You know, it's the it's the show with Avery called Postgrads at the Platte. We added a podcast called The Full 40, which is some guys from Villanova's. Uh, I said Villanova's, Jesus. From Villanova, who uh, they do a podcast on there, and then it's my show. Stay tuned with D-Ray. Uh, so it says network, and clearly you are bringing yeah. other um, shows and creatives onto your platform. Yeah. What's your long-term plan for Stay Tuned Network? I, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. That's what I'm saying. Like, and I hate to come up here with so many I don't knows. And I mean, that's, that's, as a creator, that's, yeah, that's probably the is. best thing you could say. That's all right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that just eased the shit. <laughs> 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 like, and it's funny because, like, knowing, seeing you where you are on your creative journey now, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, this is what you created. Yeah. You don't know what's to come. Yeah. And I think even, like, I was talking to Tony today when we were working on some of our film stuff. Yeah. It's like... We knew old head was gonna be old head. Yeah. But well, what's next? We don't know. Yeah. We know we're gonna jump we into it. We're gonna do something. Yeah. We know we're gonna do something great. So and I, and like, I had no. Tony on there. I had yeah. Tony on there. And Tony was on the first season and he came up and talked about his journey and everything. So like I said, it's just it, it's a little bit of everybody. Um I, I think for the ultimate vision for it, I, I would have to say uh a um how do they word it? They they use a term for it. I heard it. I was reading something with ASAP Rocky. They said creative agency. Yeah, I, sure. I think that's where it's going. It's going to be a little bit of everything. I can see us getting involved with events mm -hmm. um, because I have people around me who have an eye for that. And okay. to me, it's like, why not execute on it? Why not help with that? Obviously, the production part with the, the shows and the podcasts. Um, the Dear Kobe thing was technically our first film. Yeah. You know, it's, it's 33 minutes. That's a, that's a film in most yeah. respects. So just a little bit of everything. You know what I, mean? I just realized I saw that. You did? did you? I feel like I did. But, you know, let me, uh, go, next go, go, episode, go. I'll go look. And I'll make sure I'm not <laughs> crediting, you. like, you, you to something no, else. No, 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 no. I appreciate feel like that. I did. I appreciate it. I feel that. like it did. It, did it trend at all on the news? I'm not sure. I don't watch the news. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> he came from all the news. By the news no by the, if you mean by the news, Twitter, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I was going to say, you got to yeah, yeah, set up your yeah, uh, Google yeah. Analytics. Ah, or your, um, your Google, um, what do you call it? Your alerts. Yeah, your alerts so that they, yeah. you know when you're, you are you can watch the content. I, I, wanna, I, I do want to dive into that, too. But I also <laughs> want to talk, I know you mentioned before about like creative confidence. Yeah. I think with creatives, I mean, that's something that everybody kind of struggles with. I know I struggled with myself. How do you find ways to, you know, make sure that you put out the, conf the confidence, wow. putting out the content, you know, mm -hmm. and taking pride in that and celebrating those moments Yeah, that, like, you know, you can feel happy. I, I, I did this. I put out a whole yeah. season of content. How do you kind of, you know, find that balance? Uh, saying fuck it. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I, I think I think for so long in my life, um, I, like, held on to that side of myself. You know what I mean? I really tried to make sure that that didn't show because of the fear of what this person would think, what that person would think, what this person would feel, what that person would feel, who would I offend. Yeah. Um, and it, there's spaces to feel like that, there's spaces to operate like that, but not when it comes to your art, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I have realized that the best of it had come from me just being able to let go and let it just be what, like I said, just push it forward, let it be what it is, and you feel how you feel about it. Yeah. But at least I got it out. Because for me, it became a lot more painful to not do that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. to, to sit there and then hold on to things and you know have all these visions and ideas that you want to do this show, you want to do that show, I want to tell this joke in front of people, I want to, you know, like, this fucking comic comedian, you know, this, yeah. sorry, sorry. For it feels like it's like overloading. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. where if, you, if you're not releasing some, then it just keeps building exactly, up. Exactly, And then you get, you get this like, because I, I, I go through this, this anxiety, yeah, anxiety of now trying to prioritize what should come out first, what should exactly. I do. It's, yeah, and then it's not, it's it not art anymore. It's not art anymore. Yeah. It's just an agenda. Yeah. So for me, with, with art and it comes to being a creative, just if you feel it, like, just let it go. And if people feel it, they like it, you'll find out. They'll tell you. And That's if they good. don't, and it's something that really speaks to you, fuck them. Keep yeah. going. You know what I mean? It's something to be said about, like, just taking pride in what you 
what you put together. And I don't think yeah. creatives talk about it enough. And I think a, a lot of people do suffer. Not, I, I don't want to say suffer from it, but it's a, it's, a, it's a robot for a lot of people. Not a lot of yeah. people just, oh, just put your content out, you'll be fine. It yeah. doesn't stop the anxiety. It doesn't stop. Yeah, you know, no. Oh, hell it's no. It's like something you got to work through. You got to do it scared. You got certain things I feel like you really have to do it scared. Like when we, we put that, you know, that first season of the show out, it was... Anybody who saw me play, like, they didn't expect that. You yeah. know what I mean? And they straight up told me to my face, thank God, in a good way. But they didn't <laughs> expect that. You know what I mean? It's just like, all right, people could not accept this at all. People could not like it at all. But I'd be damned if I don't find out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that was my attitude. Like, I, it's it's like doing a bunch of work, and then you get the check, and you don't cash it. Like, I yeah. did all this up until this point. Yeah. Let me, let, you know, at least give it a chance. You know what I yeah. mean? Give it, give, it's a plant. Give it some light. You know what I mean? Give it some life. And... If it grows, it grows, and if it don't, then look at what you did wrong and fix it next time around. Absolutely. You know oh, I mean? and that's that's a big statement. What you said about, you know, you just do it, and it doesn't really matter what the people think about you. It's like fuck it, because yeah. I see it right now. There's a lot of commodification around art. Me and my friend, she's amazing visual artist, but she's finishing her masters and. You know, professors sometimes like, I don't like this, I don't like yeah. that. And I said, man, fuck them. Fuck it's not about like. what they like, yeah. right? You, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's like, are you, like, that turns into your art being this thing of like, is it marketable? And it's like, yeah, we are, where we're selling it. Yeah. But really, great art isn't kind of. Exactly. exactly. It's hard to be quantifiable, especially mm-hmm. when you're first, right? Yeah. yeah. But wow. So that's, yes, you know what? You have made a lot of leaps. Thank you. Like, as far as in artistic bravery and integrity. Quickly. Thank you. Because I know people who've been, they've been in this content game a long time and they don't, mm-hmm. some of them don't have that confidence yet. I, I think, and I, I mean, just to speak on it and like really make it clear, it comes from regret. Yeah. Um, played there, I was there on the championship team and all that was great, but when I look back on my career, I'm not satisfied with it. I'm not satisfied with Villanova. Mm-hmm. I was satisfied with my year in Poland. I was satisfied mm-hmm. with um, Low Marion. I was satisfied with my prep school year up in Boston. And when I look at Villanova, I was like, well, why was I not satisfied with that? And it was because I was so focused on being perfect. I never mm-hmm. allowed myself to make mistakes. I never allowed myself to do it. And all these things that I had to offer, I just didn't let it out. You know wow. what I mean? And, and then the last game is, is going off, and I'm giving my jersey up, and it's just like there was so many more times Quite frankly, I should have just said, fuck it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and some of my best games have come from when I played like that. You know what I mean? So I, it comes from regret. I was, I figured, I look at this like a, another life. I look at, like, because all of this happened around the time that a lot, like I said, my injury, the show, all that was condensed into, like, one summer. So, like, if I'm going to have a second chance at this, do it right. You know what I mean? Do yeah. it. Do it in a way that speaks to you. No regrets, so exactly. you won't look back and say, "Why? Why did I try to do the same choice?" Exactly. Boy, this is like a metaphor for life. I mean, I, I was just like, that was deep. That's for like, that's like it's that's it's not it's not every day that people kind of have that ability to like. I feel like like you said, you condensed you had a traumatic incident, you had two life changing experiences, yeah. and a tra- and a transition all in one summer. Yeah. Not many people can come out of that and be like, "Okay, that helped me grow and learn and develop to become yeah. the creative that I am now." You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's very strong that you can even take that and, and, and create what you created from there. there. There is something to be said about Villanova, though, and mm-hmm. how it's like, I know a lot of athlete turned artists who mm-hmm. found incredible support yeah. through Nova's program and in film and media. Yeah. So, you know, like, shout out to Hez. Yeah. You know, you be doing your thing. <laughs> Hez, be, yeah, Hez be looking for you, too. Yeah. Hez be like, you might be good at this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, you were all the way involved. Yeah, nah, he's a, a godsend, man. He, he's a godsend. And I got, that That was not a knock on Villanova. We no, won. no, no. You, know no, you, you mean yeah, your yeah. personal performance exactly, at Nova where exactly. you're like, I need to stack up because Nova had a run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like, and you know, Nova had a run in the 90s, too. Yeah. So they're, they had this reputation this yeah. what do you, what would you call it this um they have this legacy yeah so you were trying to be perfect to like i don't want to, to maintain legacy exactly. up. i want to maintain it exactly. but you weren't serving yourself exactly well, you probably was like i could have took a few more shots yeah. but i got scared because i didn't want to airball exactly, it exactly exactly so like it's i could have like, i could have been a little more selfish yeah. and went for it so yeah, yeah no 100 percent. but i'm just like noticing that like tony but it's like yeah. maybe i know tony's story i'm so like close to yeah. that yeah so it's just like wow but no one the people in that film media program too, how they're very, they like let's go. You you have a story in you. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. go. Yeah. That's amazing stuff. So the, the Kobe tribute, you say do it scared, right? Mm-hmm. So how what was your emotion with doing it? You know, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. Um, shit, Philadelphia's own yeah. Lower mm-hmm. Marion's finest. Mm-hmm. 
the, the the one kid on the planet who wanted to be like Mike and actually did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, was it scary? Did you like? Did you have any ex, like any like fear around like is this gonna be good enough, quality enough, or were you just like look, this is a little passion thing, mm -hmm. and if only two people see it, I don't care. No, well, with the Kobe thing, the quality was to me it was the the first thing was taste. Make sure that it's tasteful, um, because the, the the what we shot is, is shot in two parts. The okay. part of it is a letter that I wrote to Kobe, and then part of it is me and my godfather sitting down. And my godfather was actually watched him when he was younger. He's Joe Bryant's nephew, so he has all these pictures and and photo John? albums. Of, no, no, Sharif. Sharif. Okay. okay. And he has all these pictures and 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 you know photo albums of Kobe as a kid. Yeah. And it's it's Joe Bryan in there. It's Kobe. It's his mother. It's the it's, it's the sister. You know, like it's everybody in there. So I was like, if you're dealing with something this delicate around, you know, someone's passing, yeah. first and foremost, it has to be tasteful. Don't do this shit Absolutely. on some, you know, on some just exploitation. Like you got to tell the story. Obviously, it's art. You're you're in the film media business, so it's business. Yeah. You know what I mean. But at the same time, like make sure it's tasteful. And then the next thing was the quality. And I felt like we did a great job with that, but. If anything, the emotions came from um, just like it was that it was that moment of do I have the right to tell the story? Do yeah. I have the right to do this? Yeah. And like I said, it's like I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's my godfather. He hit me up about these photos. I went to Lower Marion. I played at Lower Marion. Yeah. It's like it, it really. It, if anything, towards the end, it turned into a, if not you, then who? Oh, type yeah. of thing. You know what you I know? mean? Not to sound too egotistical, but it's like. You know, sometimes you need your ego to, yeah. to be like you. You gotta go, and that's yeah. that's really what happened with that. I got married, and and it's crazy because I think in like a lot of like in the film world, where people will say I didn't like this version, or people were talking, you know, different films, whether it's Harriet or mm -hmm. and I said I didn't like it. It's like well, make your own movie. Yeah, because you know it's like someone may say, okay, I didn't know Kobe. Like they're not Philly people. Where yeah. I like, think we all know Kobe's family. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah. know, you know, what I mean friends and family, and yeah. but then there's some people who might be like they're in Nebraska, they never met him, but yeah. it's like that was still a, a, his death affected them so personally, his yeah. career, his you know life affected them personally, where yeah. you know so. Yeah, but it is the thing of like who gets to tell what stories yeah. and what does it mean. I mean, that's, it's also for you too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's one of those things where it's like you—it's a chance for you to tell the story that you want to tell as well. Mm -hmm. Like I said, first and foremost, it being tasteful. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you're definitely doing that, and I think you did a great job doing that. But at the same right. time, it's like it's your version of the story. This is what he meant to me. This is you know what his effect in the community, and you have a right to tell that. Thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you. So. Yeah. That's, that push is definitely yeah, definitely a push. And yeah, no, it was a, it was a lot. It was fun yeah. though. It was fun. It's, it's it was really part of a much bigger project. Yeah. yeah. Um. I I think, um, through stories like that, there's a chance to to put together something a, a lot more in depth. Um. Something with a you know that has a lot more width to it. Sorry, a lot more depth to it than width. Yeah. Um. And that's what we're working on now. That's what, if anything, that project was really just a sizzle reel for yeah. Yeah. to show people what you're capable of. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, so um, mm. I was I, I we could say that mm. I'm all like so. Do you have any ideas on who you want to contribute <laughs> to? So that's, I'm all like let's talk deals, <laughs> but <laughs> not my business. Yeah. Um, all right. So this is a question. Go off. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, right, so this is a question we ask our guests. Mm -hmm. um, what album? So we we talk a lot. I think everyone, not everyone. I say I hate when I say everyone. Like yeah. who's everyone? Um. Like in music, there's yeah. like the great hip hop album, right? Yeah. And generally, it follows the format of like the hero's journey. Yeah. And if you look at your own life, mm -hmm. you can see it has a theme of the same. Mm -hmm. What album, if any, would you say defines you, your life, your journey? Right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think this sums up a lot of it, but especially right now, Reasonable Doubt. Reasonable Jay doubt, Jay Z. Um, why? First, Tell us why. We would love to know. Right. So <laughs> yeah. first and foremost, at the beginning of this school year, so October, was my last job with Nova, we was out in LA with the team. I was actually doing some stuff for the network as well, and I got the second part of regret. Sorry, I'm ashy. Uh, the second. <laughs> you put the ash all out of the camera. Exactly. You exactly. can edit that out. I got <laughs> yeah, some I forgot that in post. I had some lotion in post. This is just turn up the saturation or whatever. But um, this is the this is the second uh, 
the second hook to regrets. Okay. You know, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about regret. Yeah. Exactly. You know, when I was young, he used to told me, he used to hold me, told me I was the best. Anything in this world I want, I could possess. Yeah. All that made me want is all that I can get in order to survive. You got to learn to live with regrets. Like that yeah. for me is like the quote of my life. You know yeah. what I mean? Like really just, just don't leave here with regrets. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it, it really is yours. Um, number two, I'm 26. Mm. Um, and that was the same year that he dropped it. And then number three, it was, I, I love, especially right now as I'm starting off in like this new life, I love listening to artists at this time. It's funny how you, you spoke about At like, their age. Exactly. Uh, not even at this age, just, just like them early in their career. Mm -hmm. I love listening to J. Cole's first album and comparing it to the Dreamville album that just came out, yeah. you know, or any of the other ones. Because you kind of hear through these guys, they get so mad that like people like Jay-Z and them don't share this story or share that story or share this insight or share that insight. But look at their art. If you listen to their music deep enough, you can really find out what these guys were going through. Exactly. Like Drake comes out years after and talk about how views he was going through a rough time. But when you listen to it, it's like you, you can hear, hear it. You can hear yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like this, this it's emotion. It takes emotion to make this type of stuff. So I think for me, reasonable doubt from the evils to politics as usual. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's on Can I Live when he Can says, I I'd rather die enormous than live dormant. dormant. Exactly, that's how we own it, live at the main, main event. event. Exactly. Trip the exactly. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. Yeah. exactly. So, like, that that type of the mindset that he was in at that time, um, the thing, even you listen to the evils, it's like everybody sees the title of that song, they think it's something bad, but it's like, no, he's talking about battling, you know things around him. He's talking about stepping into a new light and it's like you have to deal with all these things that come with it. That's what that song really is about. Um twenty two twos, you know, for all my people it ain't too low uh you 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 fuck with this out. Like, no no Jay is, no Jay Z for me is like that's yeah. he yeah. is you know like that's Jordan. And and that's one of those things where like artists first album, they yeah. had they whole adolescent's career yeah. and so it's like this is the catalog of it everything they unload like exactly. they basically it's like what we said like as you're like all these projects like you have to get rid of it so that's exactly. their like that's first just, release it's all out there yeah and lord knows he started in 88 you know what i mean and he yeah. took that eight year hiatus and did whatever he did and then you come back he always speaks about how he made his first album in 26 his insight on it was completely different, different. from yeah. an 18 or 19 year old Absolutely. putting out their first album yeah. so and me, like, starting, it's, it's kids who have, like, been 20, 21. they like, oh, no, I've been doing sideline in my college and this, that, and the third. Like, I'm I'm old head. Like, I'm just starting. But because of that, I look at this shit completely different. So yeah. for me, it would have to be reasonable doubt. And when he said that uh, for all my people, it ain't too late to come together. There's yeah. too much black and too much love. He was forever. It's like, this how this dude was thinking from the jump. At that you age. You know what I mean? At that yeah. age. So... And it's cool. I mean, at least even when you say reason without, it's incredible to think like in your mind like that's where you are now, and just yeah. the imagine the growth that you can take. Because yeah. if you think about you know Jay Z's discography from this point on, it's like you got mad room to grow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which is kind of cool in that, in that same true. sense. So exactly. I always quote uh, was it Blueprint Three when he said niggas want my old shit, buy my old album. Wow. Yeah. Where you like look, he's like I'm so far from who I was. Yeah. You know, because like you're gonna you're gonna grow. Yeah. And I think that's what that's one thing I think with all artists you gotta mm -hmm. like. Except people will see your work and want that yeah. over and, and over, over again yeah. and over, right? Then and then go you... find the person that's in that space. Exactly. Yeah. I, I never, I never understood that. I don't. I love little baby. I love Gunna. I don't turn none of them on to hear some some educational shit. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But if I'm, I want some hit or lick music, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> listening right to there. them, and I yeah. wouldn't. That's what I, I used to be able to expect that from. I don't know, a 50 cent. You could expect it at yeah. times from a Jay-Z. You could expect it at times from many different people. Mm -hmm. But if you want that now, listen to someone who's in that headspace. I'm going to say, too, mean? like, I think one of the challenges that I know I, I went through last year mm -hmm. was when we finished our last season of Old Head. For me, I was just like, as an artist, you know, as a visual yeah. creator, like, yeah. you feel like you're going to grow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I got to a point where I, I, I think I talked to Tony about this. I was like, I want to do more than this. Yeah. And, like, you get to a point where it's like... Cool, you did that. Like, like, stay tuned with D-Ray. That'll be that's great. But yeah. you might go to a point where you're like, all right, I want to, I want to tell a story. Exactly. I want to tell a narrative. Sure. Exactly. And you're gonna have plenty of people who are gonna be like, yo, but I like what you was doing before. It's like, okay, yeah, all right, go watch. Real watch that shit. I'm saying, that's like, the beauty of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's documented. Go yeah. watch it. Exactly. You don't like, take like, down exactly. videos. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. like check out my narrative. Um, it's funny we were talking about earlier. 
<clears throat> there's a book because I think a lot of people reference it by Todd Henry called Die Empty mm-hmm. about like whatever art you have in you, your insights, let it go, get it out there. Yeah. Whether you can sell it or not, even if it's free, you're well, the creativity will keep coming, but yeah. like don't die with stuff in yeah, you. Yeah, so Jazzy Jeff um, cites that book a lot yeah. and tells creatives like die empty, get die it empty. out of you. Yeah. Don't let it drive you crazy and yeah. it's, you have to let it go to then, you know, I can say like the cup is overflowing. How can you bring more in? Yeah. You know, you have to like empty it, you know? You have to. It's um, important. Definitely is important. So, what is your like routine, like your daily routine, morning routine? Um, are you, how <laughs> much? Like, I don't even know. You said you don't even know? <laughs> no, 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 no. He was teasing. I was watching his reaction. He was teasing. And I was just like, mm, I hit the, you know that gift of the white dude? To us. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hit that for a second. Um, my morning routine. Um, I wake up, I get on my knees, I pray, I have a glass of water, and I always listen to, I started, it started when I was in Poland, I always listen to Jay-Z, he has a song called Smile, on 444, and his mother says a poom at the end, um, about about living living in the shadows, exactly, about living in the shadows, um, you know, and when I hear that, it's just like, all right, the melody that song has, the, the cadence they carry through it. The poem she says at the end, you know, it's like, you know, living in the shadows feels like the safe place to be. No harm for them, no harm for me. But, you know, life is short. And nothing's guaranteed. You know, smile. So it's like to hear that, to start my day off with that, I've learned that, like anything else, if you have the start and the end down, you know, and that's solid, what happens in the middle ain't going to mess it up. Yeah. I, had, I had to develop a routine because it's like, you know, with this, you can't just keep living. When I was out there in Poland, I'm playing, you know, professional basketball. It's like... I can't just keep living and, you know, expect people to make a schedule for me. I got to find a way to kind of, you know, do it for myself. Uh, that that playlist always changes, but that's the only song that's on there indefinitely. Yeah. It's, right now it's that, Tuscan Leather, and mm-hmm. Perfect Timing by Nipsey Hussle. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Tuscan Leather by Dre. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's really, and then from there it's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> you know, what first. I try to read, I try to read first before I do anything, but, yeah. Uh, I don't get on social media until like nine. I think that's like the only thing in the morning. It's get like your brain right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So you don't have your notifications come on your lock screen? No, not no. I turn my mind no. off. I got I, I, I got I gotta change that. Cause no. boy, I get distracted. I'll be like, let me t- call my mom. Yeah, Wait, you exactly. Said, what? exactly. Exactly, exactly, like, exactly. And then you uh, then you find yourself. Then I'm and then I'm in the scroll. Exactly. Uh, the endless exactly. Scroll. So nah, I had to I had to step away from social media hey, to like now. Real quick, turn your notifications off for disrupting the culture. You know, we be posting, so you ain't got the notifications on. Make sure exactly. you That's the only one you should have. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But outside of that, no, the Twitter and the Instagram. Yeah, mommy on my lock screen, so I see everything and then I'm my whole day gets derailed sometimes. Yeah, Not D Ray as in D Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> I just be like, oh so uh. <laughs> now, it's, it's it's crazy how like important music can be to creatives. Yeah. Like I feel like every like everybody we've talked to so far, no matter their kind of their realm is bracelet. He's like, it's my bad. Drew's gonna kill me. <laughs> in their realm there's music that's important to us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. There's there's some type of form or foundation that we all have. So like even yeah. when you're saying like your routine like one of the things, like, what if you could say there, if you could say, what three things made up who you are the most? What would they be? Shit. What three things made up who I am the most? Yeah. You mean like um, events? People, I mean, it could be, it could anything? be, it could be things that you carry with you every day. It could be, you know, things that people in your life or you know things that happen in your life. Uh, I think first and foremost would have to be my mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rabia, she's just. I got a therapist as a mother, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, and as someone who grew up kind of troubled, to have somebody like that at home that I could talk to Is constantly. Is she really a therapist? No. Oh. You know I'm, saying? By, I'm about to say, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm good. saying, I'm saying like yeah. by, cra- not by craft, but, but someone by did. exactly yeah. who she yeah. is by, herself. By her example, her discipline. Yeah. Uh, or her demonstration, she like listens to she you. Just, she's just the best. Uh, so my mom, first and foremost, because it's, it's, it's been up and down. Um, Second, I would have to say uh, my need to know. I'm not. Mm. Much, I don't do well with not knowing things. I don't do well with not being able to explain something. I don't do well with not being able to like really brace. I was the kid who used to take stuff apart just to figure out how to put it back together. Yeah. 
yeah, so yeah. I, I'm about to say, you know, it's almost like a separate segment. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm about to ask. I was like, you a Virgo or Gemini? <laughs> really? really? Yeah, Libra, I'm a Libra. Yeah, October 13th. It wasn't wow. a Friday, it was a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, I always got to say that. <laughs> Everybody asked. You look at you like, oh, yeah, for real? Yeah, October 13th. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, nothing happened. I, I came out and that was it. Um, <laughs> okay, so you saw your curiosity. Yeah, you know exactly. how things are going. Exactly. I, I, I have your own podcast called Signs and What They Be. <laughs> you know, I be. Just the, the, the I just new. missed the mark. You probably got a Virgo or Gemini moon. You need to get your chart. Done. I got a I got a, a Scorpio. Hey, no. Which one? Chart. Which which one? Which one is the one? Which one is the one? Is like it appears what you are. Which oh, one is that? that's your rising sign. That's Scorpio. how you show up. And Scorpio. People, wow. And then what was the one? Intense. And then the moon. Scorpio is intensity. Your yeah. Moon, yeah. And then the moon was what? Which one was the one? That, it was it was two of them. It was the one you know what I you, you know what your moon may actually be Libra because you're rising and you're well. A lot of people I see their rising and their moon are usually right next to each other, mm-hmm. but your moon is kind of like who you are, emotions and like emotionally. I think that was Virgo. I, one of them was Scorpio. One of them was Virgo, and obviously I'm. I'm, I'm so I was still I was still right though. Yeah. Oh yeah, no no you. <laughs> you can talk about numerology <laughs> later, 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 later. But, um, but um, yeah, so you said your mother. A mother. Your curiosity. My curiosity, and I honestly am starting to realize my inability to retain things. I, mm. for the longest time, battled this, and I thought it was something that was holding me back in life. Like, I was the guy who would go to learn language, and I just couldn't retain it. And I honestly wow. think, yeah. it and just keep moving, yeah. I'm realizing this is much more of an asset than, um, than, than a liability because it's at, wow. at this point in my life I'm realizing it's like if you would have held on to shit and let it you know cut as deep as it, it should have yeah. you probably wouldn't have made it wow. so the ability to just keep you know what's the crazy reset. thing is I was just having I was having a conversation similar to that like one I attribute it kind of like to being an athlete how you're always focused on the next thing next play next thing like make it happen yeah. at the same time growing up if you're moving around a lot for yeah. me it was always like how do I adjust yeah. what can yeah. I do next yeah. wow. how can I make it happen yeah. you know what I'm saying so like you're it turns to adaptability. Exactly. Yeah, and that may have been a um, defense mechanism you developed. Oh, yeah. from, like you said, from moving place, yeah. place to place so you're not dwelling on, like, I miss my old friends. Yeah. 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 I mean, our brains naturally do that. Yeah. That's, that, yeah. that's obviously a whole other conversation. Yeah. But our, our brains naturally hide things from us that just feel like it's going to hurt, hurt us. us. Yeah. you got to get to the subconscious and conscious mind and all that. But, like, yeah. I'm starting to realize, like, that for me, especially over these past couple years has been, like I was joking. I was getting wheeled into the hospital with my knee injury. And it's like a video of me like touching my fingertips, like da, 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 da. <laughs> As I'm getting rolled into the hospital and it's like yeah. my ability to laugh shit off and just keep going and yeah. you, you know, that's what, I think that's what really makes me who I am. Yeah. Wow. Have wow. you ever read Kevin Hart's I Can't Make This Up? No, I haven't read it. You should read not. it or listen to the audio book. Cause okay. it's literally, as you yeah. say, he says ability to just be like, Fuck it. Yeah, exactly. And then you that face, you just like it's just such a strength. Like he's like it's wow. Yeah. I know we probably got wrap up soon. All right. Yeah. How you talking to the invisible? They 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 know they back there. I'm asking. I just wonder how much time I got. It's, yeah. Oh yeah, it's we are over time. It's yeah, it depends on if there's somebody coming up next. I don't know. Yeah. All right, so let's Fuck let's, let's, let's <laughs> hey. <laughs> slow me, slow me the day. That's the theme, that's the theme of the city. So no. what is, what is your ultimate goal? You know, if you mm-hmm. could paint perfect world, mm-hmm. wildest dream. Right, like so you 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 do, um you bang with nips. So you know, I said I took my wildest dream to map them out. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like. What if your wildest dream, forget money or anything else, needing that to get to what your ultimate goal is? What, what's your goal? What would you like? Or how do you see yourself in your wildest dreams? Uh, immortal. Mm. Right. Right. We're not immortal talking how, Highlander. How, huh? We talking how. like I'm a career wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm not dying. No, no. At the end of the day, we're, we're all gonna leave. Nipsey has spoke on this, uh, Steve Jobs has spoke on this. Um, a lot of people you see who you can see in their work is much more about that work living way beyond me mm. um, mm. and, and, and kind of etching out a spot in history. I was talking with the, the Dear Kobe thing and in the letter, I'd actually cut out a piece at the end. There's a part at the end where you know it pans up and you see his jersey 
And during that, I said the mama mentality would be continued as long as the son. Sounded too dramatic okay. to leave off on yeah. that. And yeah. that sounded like some shit that we about to like cut our hands and put <laughs> in a circle for us. So I was like, it just, it just sounded like some cult shit. Yeah. So I was like, ah. Oh, that's how it's like. Yeah, exactly. Let's just, I, I just told my editor, like, let's just, too let's just take, let's too take that out. Exactly. But I had meant that. And I, I was talking to somebody. I was like, you know, the Aristotles, the, the, the uh, Socrates, the, the people of their time. Yeah. They were people, you know what I yes. mean, and it was just their message and their 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 uh their thoughts and all that out it outlived them by centuries, you know what mm -hmm. I mean. And I honestly think Kobe is about to be the next that, like somebody in the year I don't know thirty, you know, three thousand, whatever's gonna look back and hear the way this man thought and the mm -hmm. way he executed his life, and it's like yes. that outlived him by far. So mm -hmm. for me and my wildest dreams in the right way, that is what wow. I'm going for. Okay, that's solid. Thank you. All right. Well, this is the time when we do wrap up. Sadly. My man, my man. Um, I can't say fuck him for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I do gotta get out of here. Yeah. But um, let us let, let everybody know where they can follow you. They can see mm -hmm. your media, your content. If they can keep up with you, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I think first and foremost, follow Stay Tuned Network. It, it should someone. I got to look at this camera. It's on, it's on LinkedIn. It's on Twitter. Uh, I, I think it's probably we only still have a profile shot. Yo, I don't know. How do you want to look at this? Is this thing <laughs> up? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yo, hold on, hold on. I, I, I ain't one for saying too soon, but too soon. <laughs> this camera on, you looking at me? <laughs> um, stay tuned network for LinkedIn. It's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Twitter under D Ray the Director. Um, Spell it D R E Y. D -R -E -Y. Sorry, you're right. Everybody put R E Y. Mm -hmm. D R E Y. The director. Uh, D dot R E Y. Forty four on Instagram. But like I said, really that stay tuned network. Like just pay attention to that and the people that we're bringing on to that. Cause just getting creatives that have the same passion um, and, and work ethic, you know, as as me and the people I surround myself with, and it, it's turning into something great. So that's, that's pretty much good. As well, thank you first and foremost for even showing up, you know, being a part of this. We'd love to have you, of course. Um, and for all the followers and viewers out there, you know, tune in to uh, the Chapters of the Culture podcast on our anchor. You can check us out on our YouTube. Please subscribe. Uh, Mike J Films YouTube, the Chapters of the Podcast, Season 1. Check us out. Like, um, like subscribe, subscribe, and share. Share, follow, all that. Please and thank you. Um, we'll holler at y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>